Podcast. I'm Kat. And I'm Moose. This is our interview series where we interview people who display the quirks of being human. Awesome to see you guys. I it's love all of you. you. Aww, I thank do. you. I really do. All, all of us love you too. We do. <laughs> Tori, we're, we're going to tell you why we love you, but first, why don't you go around and tell us? Because that's what we like to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, no, I enjoy validation, so I'm happy to give it. <laughs> what does your sweatshirt say? It says books are magic. Yeah. Ooh. It's the bookstore in Brooklyn, New York that Emma Straub, the author, owns. Oh, Ooh. yeah. No so um, I haven't been there. But during the pandemic, Justin, um, my one of my number one loves is books and reading. So he surprised me with um sweatshirts or shirts from like a whole bunch of different bookstores around the world. Oh my <laughs> that gosh, that's wow. so sweet. Cool. Yeah. And it's really cool because um like he got me a tote bag from Shakespeare and Company in Paris Ooh, and what? like I want to all the places I want to go. Wow. But it'll like I'll be in the store and someone will say something and it'll be like a great conversation starter. Not that I actually like talking to people. Yeah. Life, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's if a I, straight pass for I, me. I mean, yeah, that actually is. Yeah, you get it. But I know you get that because you, you get good at making eye contact and saying thank you and then just keep going. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I secretly think that you and I are the same person because all the things that you write in about sometimes I'm like, yes, please. I was like, how do I my my greatest my only fear is like that I'm going to sound like a creep because I relate, you know, like that I'm going to be to like sound like I'm no creeping because I yeah. I know that you hate people too, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. So I would say, like, I don't, you know, when Friends first came out, I know you do because Moose, we're actually like we're almost the same age. Or, oh yeah, because yeah. I was born in August '78. Yeah, we're like a month apart. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, re- oh, really? I'm se- I'm the end of September. Oh, awesome. And yeah, that's awesome. So September 30. I don't know why she's being shy. Okay, guys. So like, what's your sign? Mine is Sagittarius. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not why. Are you a Leo or Libra? I'm a Leo. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. yeah Great. I'm a Leo. Um, so where was I going with that? Oh, what, so when Friends started, I was a huge Friends fan back in the heyday. I couldn't wait for every Thursday night to come along. <laughs> but you know how people be like i'm a rachel i'm a monica so yeah i'm like i'm a moose <laughs> yeah <laughs> i knew it hey <laughs> and, I, and i'm like and and i was trying to think like if i'm gonna openly share that would what would i say my connection with cat is and she almost like represents she feels like my closest friends that i've had throughout life like mm. my best friend my you know like yeah and that i, I hear so clearly mirrored that that dynamic that I <laughs> as someone being very similar to what you know Musa shared is yeah is definitely connected to people like cats that's, Aww, so, cool. that's so awesome it is sweet do you know what your Enneagram type is you want to guess I do well I I would guess I'm gonna guess a six eight or nine but I'm oh. gonna lean on a nine nine four Oh, you are? oh, so that means I'm desperately in love with you. Yeah. Yes. Cat, God. <laughs> Cat falls in love with every four that could possibly walk across her path. <laughs> Platonically, Aww. too, for what it's worth. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fun. I love it. Okay, that makes a ton of sense. We're going to find out today yeah. why you are a four. Yeah. Well, I, I really was worried that this interview might be a little difficult, but it's not. We're already halfway through it. <laughs> Don't be sorry. No, just just kidding. 
we we didn't think it would be difficult. We we are so excited because you, Tori, are the first listener that we ever heard from who we did not know. It's true. Who we didn't know. Yep. That is true. And our friend that we have never met in person lives in Maine. Her name is Tori. And she is here with us today. Welcome, Tori. Hey, Tori. Tori. Oh, well, that means a lot. I don't often, I'm not, it's not something I routinely do. (laughs) Yeah. Unless I'm deeply moved. You know, I've reached out to authors before if I've really been touched by their book, never expecting anything. And um, it was just the most wonderful gift to come across the um come across your podcast and then hear it and it was just I I was thinking it is most definitely one of the biggest gifts of quarantine for me (laughs) I I saw I was trying to remember back um I knew it was an Instagram ad that I had seen come through and and so I went back because I'm I'm very nerdy like that to find out. And it was in July of 2020. So that's when I started listening. And then I went, you know, went back to the beginning and listened, but it made sense. And then because I thought you probably might be a little curious, I wrote down which one it was. Oh, Oh, I want to know. Yes. That made me be like, oh my gosh, I absolutely need to listen to this podcast. And it was the (laughs) one I wrote it down in my book because I always have a book next to me. Um, if you like Glennon Doyle, spontaneous cussing, Liz Gilbert, spirituality, <laughs> therapy, and Lamont, my favorite murder, friendship, and awkward moments, you will love this podcast. <laughs> Give us a shot today. <laughs> I'm yes, telling you. That's that's from my genius brain. Yeah, no yes. kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was sold. I was sold immediately, but then when I got to like the main my favorite murder part was like we're soulmates yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a connection for sure so that's so fun uh, uh, to be fair i think that's the only ad we've ever run on the cat miss podcast and you'd be surprised how mm-hmm. many followers and, and fans we've we've found friends there's a lot of f's in that yeah and some people that thought they liked us and then ran away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're nothing That's, like those yeah. people. That's to be expected. <laughs> I've had that happen too. <laughs> so Tori, you live in Maine and you found out about the Cat and Moose podcast you were telling us in July of 2020. So during the thick of quarantine and much like we did with Kathy from Australia, we had to instantly stereotype you. Absolutely. And we said, oh my gosh, Tori from Maine must love lobster of like course. do you have an opinion about lobster <laughs> i'm a vegetarian i knew it i was like we can't talk about lobster if she hates lobster no no i mean i can give you some information about lobster. <laughs> don't let us down tori don't let us yes down. No, i want I... information from tori from maine about lobster do you know any fishermen? <laughs> I have not. So I have not been a vegetarian all of my life. So okay, I, fair. Um, and I will still eat seafood. Okay. So oh, nice. okay. Lobster is not my personal favorite. If I'm going to have really good fresh seafood, I'll probably have some really fresh sea scallops. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I, I do love lobster. I love a really well-made lobster okay, roll. Okay. Tell me, here's Ooh, my yeah. question then that I, that I want to know, because it's one of my favorite meals in the world. And I've had it a few different ways, but I imagine someone who lives in Maine, they, it's gotta be a staple item in the average household. Maybe is it lobster in general or lobster roll? Okay. Is that kind of the, like, do people have home recipes? Is there a different vibe or is it usually like lobster roll or like baked lobster? What's your favorite? Okay, so I have to pause here for a moment. Okay. Because if anybody else from Maine is listening that was born in Maine, they're going to lose their mind. Okay, all right, fair enough. Fair enough. For lobster. So let me just share my credentials. Okay, thank you. (laughs) I have lived here. I've lived here since 2005. Okay. So a long time. 
what is that? 16 years. So I yeah. have, you know, so I have some street cred, but as they would say in Maine, I'm from away. Oh, oh. <laughs> never, that never goes away unless you are born. I understand in Maine. I get that. Um, sense. So yes, I think the accessibility of lobster and like to get just fresh lobster is so easy to do from the grocery store or, you know, just like the local fish market. So it's really easy to do. There's definitely a lot of uh, families that always make sure to include local seafood as part of their celebrations and that sort of thing, where maybe not in other places where it wasn't readily accessible. Got it. Right. Um, yeah. So for sure, definitely support, you know, it's so cool to, I moved to Maine because, well, for many reasons, but um my mom is Canadian. She was born in New Brunswick and she lived mm. there until her high school years when her parents got divorced. Um, and so we would tr- spend the summer, like when we traveled, we would in the summer we'd to visit family and my grandparents, we'd go up from New York. I grew up in New York state. So we'd go from New York oh, wow. up into Maine along the coast. So I just had this, to me, it represented just like Maine in the summer is incredible Mm -hmm. and just like the coast and everything it's just magical and I think it really represented just a special (laughs) a special time of childhood for me um Mm -hmm. and so I always just wanted to it's probably the only thing I got accurate in high school when you know how you have to like we had the quote under our yearbook picture or your goal (laughs) like your personal goals (laughs) And mine actually, and I, I remember at the time thinking like, this is such a cool <laughs> Like I was just so yeah. over it. How like I you literally know? had right. one of those um, patches on my Jan Sport backpack that said, <laughs> I hate people. So like, just to let you know where I was at. Oh, even then. You guys are the same like, person. I actually, like, I deeply love humanity and I have one of yes. the biggest hearts you'll ever find, but I'm really all set with most people. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, oh anyways. <laughs> I'm really all set. This is incredible. <laughs> so, so where was I going? So, but, um, yeah. So my quote in high school said like future goals and it was to live by the ocean in Maine. Mm. And like, I, but I, and so that always feels really special to mm. kind of look back on that despite, you know, <laughs> the path that you might imagine you take looks one way and, yeah. you meander so many other ways and it like and yeah I ended up exactly where I needed to be oh, I love so that. it really re- yeah it, it's like the whole idea of just putting the intention out there and yeah. you'll land where you want to land and I don't think I would have never been self-aware enough at that time to know that you know at 18 but it yeah. at least it lived a little bit enough in my body that I was mm-hmm. able to move in that direction. And I didn't go directly to Maine. You know, I, I had a five or six year layover in Vermont and then, you know, and then I moved you to Maine. You were on your um, way. <laughs> yeah. But I was going in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We just recorded an episode that we talked about this, about how often um, those things inside of us that we align with so much, um, you know, have been there for a long time. And when we're drawn to them, there's a reason we're drawn to them. And that, you know, helps us align by recognizing what those things are. I, I think that my biggest like understanding of where I'm at on my, my self discovery journey, and just like my life journey is that we really are born with our whole selves and every Thing that is written on our hearts and who we are and so much of the first part of life seems to be about traveling away from that mm. oh wow because you are wow. doing what you use around you you're you're functioning in your family structure in front of you you're moving through society and you're learning how to adapt to how you move through society and be successful in society and all the while what I've realized is it's like getting further and further away from that person that I am. And then to be able to kind of really in the last couple of years, year, year and a half, been able to sit back and be like, huh, 
maybe I should start like, I, I actually have it all. Like I know what I wanted to do. Like I know who I am. I know what lights me up. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. And to just kind of own that. Mm-hmm. And it's so much about like finding your way back to who yeah. you are. So it's not about like becoming who you're meant to be. You are who Ooh. you're meant to be all along. Yeah. And really to me, like, I know we had emailed a little bit back and forth about midlife, but like, to me, that is what midlife has felt like so far mm. is like, really when I turned, you know, 40, I was just like, okay, well, I'm 40, like it's here. And, but now by 43, I'm like, it is time to turn in the other direction and start walking home, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that there's a sense of urgency to it to just like, oh, oh my God, like reconciling that feeling of like, have I wasted time and how did I get so far away from who I am? But then feeling that incredible power in like, it's all in me. Like mm. I, I, I know who I am what is important to me, what I like, what I don't like. And I just need to be that in the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I think I can talk about it that way. And I think where I find it really relatable to listen to you all talk is this reconciling of like your day-to-day reality and what you need to do to be responsible, to maintain the life that you've created for yourself that is a life (laughs) that allows for space to go to therapy and afford therapy. Like I'm talking from my perspective as well. Yeah. Right. To be able to maintain that life, but then really start marching in the direction of like who you are, which Mm -hmm. to me, you know, like, so it's been wonderful because I think Kat is like, you are modeling for me. Like I am doing this thing. I am passionate about this thing I want to learn about this thing and I'm just gonna put what I can into it and see where it goes and you've just started doing that too Mm -hmm. and I think for me it's that I've really I've always felt it like such a clash between like what real life looks like because Mm -hmm. if I step back from what I just said to you and be like you want to see what a typical day for (laughs) me (laughs) it's insane (laughs) and how do you honor that Mm -hmm. but each day like move in that direction I think for the longest time for me it was like so to share I am a writer through and through wow beautiful my earliest memories were always about the written word and communicating it and just that was the thing and it was that thing that just makes you feel so alive that, mm-hmm. you know, you need to do it. Mm-hmm. But of course it's one of those things that as you start to get, <laughs> you know, in high school and need to make plans for what you're going to do when you grow up in a family system that, you know, is very poor and it's like, okay, what am I going to do to get to that next step? So mm-hmm. I had a lot of those voices around me throughout you know, while I was in those years where you would start to kind of like choose a path at first to go on, that really made me feel like you are an amazing, beautiful writer, but you can absolutely not make money doing that, Mm -hmm. you know? And I, and, Mm -hmm. and you can't, and I understand now, I understand you can never, you can't for with art, you can't say like, I'm doing this because I intend to make money from it or a career, but I didn't even give myself a chance to move in that direction at all, because it was all about those other voices, you know, and those other voices to me are the ones that are like holding your hand as they're leading you away from who you are. Hmm. And so it's been really, you know, wild in the last, you know, decade of life to kind of, try to create a reality that supports like my family and who I am and what I, what I need to kind of survive in a society in a healthy way versus like this thing that is calling me and always calling me. And I'm always thinking about and trying to figure out, and it becomes this, you know, where's the time and how do I do that? So, uh, so that's my thing that I, when I talk about like knowing where I need to be and moving towards that. And so, I, you know, I'm a super 
planner, organizer, like, all right, what's the game plan? And so I think for me, it's always just been to try to find little moments to write and stuff. And really in the last, you know, throughout the pandemic, I think, and just then that middle age thing of like, if you're going to do this, like you better buck up and start <laughs> and get serious about it. Cause yes. there is a, there is a, like, there is a finite end to life. <laughs> for- I know, but we don't think about that until mid age. No. And I, and that's what I, I was, I thought the other night and I was right. I wrote it in my journal. I'm like, <laughs> it's so cliche, but it's like, life really is the ultimate game with the highest stakes. You're going to lose. You're going to lose if you think that death is losing. So what yeah. does winning look like? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Come on. Wow. To me in the last, you know, really the middle age is when I felt this sense of urgency to be like, do it, figure it out. But really understanding that I don't have to figure anything out. I just need to, listen to the like just move toward what feels good and really have that balance between like doing the things that bring me joy and moving towards the things that are joyful and light me up and Mm -hmm. also like honoring the responsibilities I have to my family at this you know and where I'm at in life yeah um so I have a question for you, Tori. So I, I am curious as it pertains to the thing that is like your superpower, that is your magic, that is your, the, the thing that fires you up and you get passionate about that thing being writing. Can you describe a victory in moving toward that in the past few months? Yeah. And that's a great question. I think for me, it's been reframing first what victory looks like Mm -hmm. and lowering the bar a little bit. I'm a perfectionist with incredibly high standards for myself. Uh, If I could tell you one thing I've heard the most from everybody always in my life is like, you're too hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. So lowering the expectations so that I can recognize that the fact that I've made the intention to find time a little bit every day to write and have, have done that more in the last few months than I've done in a long, long time, including, you know, time where maybe I feel like I should be, you know, doing something, hanging out with my kids, watching a show. Like it's telling myself it's okay to like step away. It's okay for them to start to see me. If if anything, like the gift that I can give them is showing them that you spend time doing the things that you love and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. And I think that also added to that sense of urgency of like, my kids are at the age now where they don't, you know, telling words are very like, they don't hear much that you say. Yeah. Yeah. So if I show them, if I just show them like what, what is it I want for them? I want to them to live these lives that are so true to who they are. Yeah. And full of like love and integrity. And if I don't do that for myself, that's just really sad, Mm. (laughs) you know, that's really sad. So I think it's okay. I think for me, it was, it's just been that I've literally like carried my notebook from room to room and no, instead of saying like when I'm gonna write on work on this I'm gonna write on the laptop and when I'm gonna work on this I'm gonna write in this notebook and like I I'm so quick to put like rules and expectations around it for myself and I started the year off that way like I was like going full steam ahead into 2022 with like we'll be writing this many you know you'll write 30, you'll write this amount of time every day, but not only that, you're also going to make sure you read a poem every day because a poem every day brings you joy. <laughs> you're going to read a quote every day and you love quotes. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it, the first part of the year was me like quickly realizing that I am thoroughly me and that's just not helpful at times. <laughs> but, you know, uh, yeah. So I, I, so for me, it's just like being 
lowering the expectations, just literally giving to myself the thing that feels good, which is to write, having no expectations around what it is, you know, cause of course I got into the, like, okay, if I want to like write a full book, like I, I should really knock it out and I just need to knock it out and I'm going to make it happen. And here's my timeline and that sort of thing. And, and this is me who was not even, you know, giving the space to myself to do a little bit of it each day. So it was like coming back to like, okay, I'm just going to write period. That's all I need to do. And I'm curious, Tori, like when, when you think about writing, I, I really enjoy writing too. And maybe not to the extent that you do. Um, but I really love it. And I, I find a lot of life and joy in it when I do it. And the type of writing that I do is kind of, Um, that brings me the most joy is kind of encouragement and like teaching. Um, So when you write, what is the, what is the subject matter? Is it like, is it fiction? Is it teaching? Is it like, like what is the subject matter of, of what you write that fulfills you the most? I think we should guess. Oh, Oh, okay. Let me see. I'm going to absolutely go under the category of (laughs) self-help. But I, but nope, I'm changing my mind. 100% poetry. (laughs) So I would say that I love to write long form essays that are about my life. So memoir, that kind of thing, stories Ah. about and processing through experiences, Mm. sharing my learning. So definitely like that, probably being a woman would fall under the self-help genre. Um, But I, poetry I write poetry too. And I don't have any expectations around my poetry, but I, uh, I love poetry. Will you send us, do you have something nearby that you could read or would feel comfortable reading? Oh, that I wrote. Yeah. Hmm. Um, or could you send us something and we could read it? Oh, absolutely. I would love to that. I'm always looking for, I have a couple of friends who will read things for me because they're so they're deeply it's deeply personal sure also believe that we are meant to tell our stories Mm -hmm. and so I um that is 180 degrees um from where I grew up and the family that I grew up in Mm -hmm. and so writing was uh one of my survival tools (laughs) tools <laughs> right. for a lot of my life and yeah. still is a tool that I use in moments all the time. Um, and so for me to be able to, it's like that quote that Anne Lamont said, like, if I knew you were going to say it to be said about you, you shouldn't have, should have behaved better. Yeah. <laughs> you should have behaved better. That is, Dang it. that is my, that's my like dedication page. And then you'll open it up and that will be the quote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same way. I, I, I've always thought that that quote would be my disclaimer to my book as well. You know, if just so you know, if you did some crazy shit, it's going to be up in here. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And so it's basically just, I just write about my life. And, you know, for even for a long time, it was hard for me to feel like that was enough or worthy or like the real thing, you know, because you're just like, well, I don't, because I don't write fiction or, you know, I'm not, Mm -mm. you know, that's not where my creativity lies. Um, And so but man, I have the stories and I think part of my, um, what I'm starting to realize is that the timing will be just right when it happens, because I had to be, you know, I'm doing active journeying through, (laughs) you know, life happening, processing it, moving through it, you know? And so I think for me, the time we're going to collide at a moment where like, everything that I write, I feel in some ways I want to say like strong enough to put into the world. I'm very close, I think, but, um, it will be impactful. Yes. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Yeah. There, there is no doubt. I mean, you've already made an impact just in what you've shared with, 
Moose and me and producer Sarah, just in your, your emails and your voicemails and your text messages, it's like, you've already made an impact yeah. on us. And sure. that's, that's not even like the writing that it sounds like you're talking about, you yeah. know? So like, right. if that's any example of, of how your writing is going to make a difference, like, please be encouraged that it, yeah, it has already made a difference. And I would imagine too, like, like Tori, like there has to be so much rich material in being a mother. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> I was very much, uh, never going to have children. Wow. <laughs> that was my, I was not, there's no way that was like working for my life. Huh. Thank you for I, your honesty. You know, because, I appreciate because that. of like, who I was and what I need. And, you know, that was never part of the plan. I will absolutely say, and I, you know, both of my kids were very big surprises. Um, Mm -hmm. and of course, Arlo being my first was the, the biggest surprise because I was, you know, then at a crossroads to figure out next steps and in a pretty, um, volatile marriage at the time. Mm. (laughs) Um, but I have to say it was those one, one of, uh, you know, I, it's so corny to say, but I say it all the time when I talk about Arlo is like, he is my greatest teacher. Mm -hmm. Being his mother is the greatest gift. And I, Mm -hmm. and I, Mm -hmm. I know that lots of parents say that about their kids. Mm -hmm. Also being his mother has been the hardest most painful thing that I've ever done. And I'm only on year 11 and I got a whole, it only gets harder. Let me tell you. Um, and so can you give us like a little glimpse into why? Oh, absolutely. So Arlo has high functioning autism and ADHD. Mm. Um, and he was diagnosed when he was just three, Mm. which is very early. And it was awesome that he got diagnosed that early because it, made everything like it just opened the world to under starting to understand. Yeah. Um, so now I can look back and say why uh, he had a very traumatic birth. Um, we almost lost him at birth. Mm. Um, and you know, now I can look back and say, he's who he like, this is why his, his, mm. his like bringing him home and in his infancy was like, just, I don't have any, it was the hardest and saddest and most painful and confusing. Like those those first couple of years of like, why isn't my baby like everybody else? Like, Mm -hmm. and I being who I was like, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me Mm -hmm. that I can't figure this out. And a lot of that was reinforced by unhealthy relationships. And subsequently Mm -hmm. the end of my marriage to Arlo and Meryl's father when they were just one and two. So I actually, um, became pregnant with Meryl just a few months after Arlo was born. And I, to this day, I'm like, I don't know how that happened. Like I'm telling you, (laughs) I was not around for that. (laughs) Immaculate. (laughs) Truly. I was not around for that. (laughs) This child was meant to come into this world. That's amazing. Sweet Meryl, great names. And now I I look back and everything makes so much sense because um, if I had had more time with Arlo and realized what the scope of what was in front of me, I would have never thought I could have handled having it. Oh, wow. Hmm. That is amazing. So now I look at my Meryl and Meryl means bright shining sea. She's my Meryl. Um, and she's just, she's me. And so now I'm having this incredibly unique and terrifying experience of parenting Meryl and reparenting a lot of myself when I'm doing it. Wow! And we're getting into some of these ages that were really difficult ages for me. And that has been wild. So I can't even imagine. Um, and I don't think I, I think it's one of those things that you're like, I'm glad I didn't really know that was going to be a thing when I reached those ages Mm -hmm. that I had some really tough 
you know, where things really hit the fan for me that like when I saw my child at that age, that it was going to, there was Mm going to, that was going to stir some stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that it did, but, um, man, it's parenting is really wild. Yeah. On a really daily basis. I'm like zero out of 10 do not recommend. <laughs> wouldn't she, they they are my everything they're all those things that you hear people say yeah. but like let me tell you you are choose like it's terrifying and it's heartbreaking mm. and mm. and it's beautiful but it's mm. it's oh yeah it's hard i want to go back to something you said um i i've heard this phrase before and i think i have an idea what it means but for mm. you actually learning to reparent yourself what has that meant for you and you don't have to go into any specifics you don't want to share but I'm curious it's been literally showing up for my child and my younger self and being the parent that I needed and that doesn't mean that like they also need the parent that I needed but the only way I know how to parent is from a place of like what I needed and right. what I know to be. Um, and so for me, it's hearing what I'm saying if I'm trying to work through something difficult with my child and like giving that back to myself. Of, mm. You know, I'm sorry this feels so hard for you. It's okay. All those things of like, it was just a mistake people make mistakes it doesn't mean anything's wrong with you all those things that I've struggled with to understand and that no one ever kind of said to me look it nobody really knows what they're doing it's really okay to feel completely messed up on the inside you know I think for me it's also it's also the practicality of that also is you know obviously my son works with a lot of has different you know therapies throughout life Meryl's had several therapies we we are like the therapy family (laughs) and so for me that I mean that's been a huge part of my connection with all of you as well because it's Mm. so wonderful and it's the only place in my life where I hear people talk openly about like their therapeutic experiences Mm -hmm. and where I get reinforced for me for younger me that yes this is okay you're not the only one doing this there's nothing to be ashamed of all those things and so I think that's what I try to give to them also is more of the language and the understanding of like mom you seem so stressed yes I'm feeling anxious like I'm gonna go do some breathing I'm working on it like oh wow naming things like that Mm. and just you know I I don't know so I guess that's that's where I would go with the reparenting idea yeah I have another question Tori what do people misunderstand about you most (laughs) that's a great question that I that I operate with nothing but a pure and open heart and that I open myself up to everybody that comes through my life and I think I just I get misunderstood because there's a lot going on in my head you know I have an incredibly like my world is so internal (laughs) and that's intense that's intense and so my what I would most want people to always know about me no matter what it looks like on the outside is that I'm really trying my best I am always trying my best and some days that looks way different than other days and some days even when I'm in you know not in the space I want to be like I am trying you know I'm always going to climb the mountain every day no matter what the mountain looks like each day Mm -hmm. um and I think sometimes just that becomes a lot but you know I take all of my interactions with everybody and the people in my life and the world around me like very seriously and I just 
want everyone to feel feel that, I guess. Mm -hmm. I want to comment on, you mentioned perfection earlier, and I had a teacher today in a class um, speak to someone who was dealing with a level of perfection and said, uh, okay, you, you want to be perfect. Okay, well, let's be perfect around self-compassion. And let's climb that hill. And I thought that was so. Wow. I wrote it down because I was yeah. just like, yeah. What? And, and her whole point was, let's do it around something that serves you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought it was such an interesting perspective on taking care of ourselves and perfection in the same sense. Yeah. That's, I really love that. I'm going to definitely about that i have now i have now written that on the post-it note <laughs> yeah. on my desk. thank Amazing. you so much moose that's beautiful of course that is absolutely beautiful so tori is something that i'm curious about and we're going to kind of lighten it up a little bit um <laughs> something that i'm curious about um is there a story from the cat and moose podcast that really stands out to you that made you laugh really hard <laughs> oh my gosh definitely the um your escapades on the boat with your couch. <laughs> <laughs> the trauma couch. Yes. Yeah, the trauma yes, couch, man. Yes. Um, God, I, I, we need to repost that video. <sighs> we do. The, <laughs> the episode when you're talking about the the chicken and, and the rooster and you're like, haven't we talked about chickens before? And Sarah's like, yeah, we talked about chickens then. And like, just this, you just... <laughs> You guys are so silly. I know. <laughs> and I, I love when you're like all equally taken aback at different moments in time by something like you just can't believe the other person said. Yeah, yet. like when Kat said lubrication and we were like, oh, what? My, yes, what? your reaction was amazing. Like, where are we going? I know. I'm just <laughs> appalled at us. And yet I, I feel like I'm it. home all yeah. at the same time. <laughs> I'm like, who are these people? Oh, I love these people. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, are, we're going there. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And I love Is when, when uh, curses sneak in because I'm a huge fan. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's why I put that in the ad, you know? I was going to say, yes. And, and, um, one side effect of that is your children absolutely will uh, use those words all of the time and you just you just have to go with it and yeah. that's all good sure yeah. Yeah. Sure enough. Bye, my friends <laughs> <laughs> I was actually in the car with my little niece who was three at the time and I got off a phone call and her mom was driving and I was in the uh, passenger seat and I hang up and I said, what a dick. And she goes, <laughs> what a dick. And I was like, what, what have I done of all the words? That's the one she picks up. That's amazing. I know that my, my nephew, he knows that when he comes to my house, it is a safe place to cuss. That's and that's like a it's a oh, rule that fun. we have and like that. that's and, and awesome. he he said to me one time he was like so i can say like hell and i can say <laughs> shit and he said even like damn and ass and i'm like yeah you can say all those words and he goes but i mean not the f word and i said oh yes you can say <laughs> oh, even the f the oh even the You're f the word and he was like ever. Like it was like the most, the most liberating experience. Of course, my sister has kind of disowned me since then. Well, sure, but. <laughs> but hey, that's what ants are for, right? Okay, true story. I was outside of my townhouse that I grew up in across the street at a friend's like yard. And there was like five or six neighborhood kids around. And I, I was maybe 10 years old. And I had just learned that the word hell, you could also use it where it wasn't a curse word. So I turned into a professor at age 10 and I, I asked everyone to sit on this little grassy hill and I was going to tell them what I had learned. You and were you Jesus guys, speaking to the 5,000. I of course, was. To the children. Like I, I was about to hand out some fish and some rolls up in there. But the <laughs> lobster like, rolls. Lobster rolls. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I literally 
stood there and I held court for at least 10 minutes. And the whole goal after the fact, looking back, it's funny, I have hardly any memories of my childhood. So here's a good one. And I just tried to use the word hell as many times as possible, <laughs> explaining it. But every time I said it, it was like something let loose in my soul. And I was like, so the word hell can be a curse word, but hell is also the opposite of heaven. And so, but I bet I said that thing 50 times. And yeah. those, those kids, I, I always gathered a group that were younger than me. So they naturally looked up to me, <laughs> but they were just like this. And I guarantee you every single one of them went home going like, I found out hell's not a cuss word. <laughs> <laughs> you are a persuasive you. one. It's kind of the same thing as saying like ass is not a cuss word because it is in the Bible. Exactly. You know, it's like ass, 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 ass. Yeah, there's nothing about it. Yeah, that's a pretty tried and true. Like it's an animal. Right, exactly. (laughs) Okay. Exactly. So when can I take the moose and cat noises off of the Fs? Oh no. That that's a good question. Oh, I know. I I I fully support that, but you know what's a, <laughs> a unique thing for me that gives me a glimpse into like a whole world that is very different from how I was um brought up and I find it fascinating and it's almost like a little anthropology study is you know, your religious backgrounds and just being in the south and being in the industry that you're in and it's you know, it's very um I don't, it gives me a glimpse and a perspective on things in a way like in today's world that maybe I don't necessarily feel in the same sorts of ways in the, um, you know, in the environment that I was raised in. So it's always fascinating. I need to know what is it like outside of the bubble? <laughs> yeah. Tell us. What, what is it like to not be tell here, Tori? And can we please come visit? <laughs> well, no, can we move actually? <laughs> no, we're stuck. Like in all honesty, I'm so curious. Like what is your perspective of what we share around all of that? Well, I think it's so fascinating to me. And I know that a lot of this is, you know, your career history and the, you know, it's subjective um, music industry that you're in and that sort of thing. So I find it fascinating at times, the things that you have to take into consideration Mm -hmm. to not offend people or the things that you'll say, like, you guys are thinking like, Ooh, we're being a little like edgy because, you know, we're, you know, and you're really in, in it where, for me, I'm like, yeah, that would never be a consideration. <laughs> so that I, Kat, do you yeah. hear this, Kat? This, this is, is for you. Never. I'm never like, I don't, um, to even be in a place where people's would impose their religious view on me in that way where it was like, hmm kind of the majority or the the natural thing it's just not it's foreign huh yeah it is foreign not to say that you can't find your pockets of everything every I mean that's just not the world I orbit in I mean there's a there's a kooky turret trader on the corner for me but I think just (laughs) hey don't we all have one (laughs) I mean yeah totally um (laughs) I want to know I want to know about the kooky church please I think it's, it's a seven day Adventist church, which I okay. don't know a lot about. So, um, oh, but I know yeah. they are there on days when I wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Their, their Sabbath is a Saturday. Yeah. I don't claim to, um, know a ton about that, but I guess just the more, it's just fascinating. And just mm-hmm. the, the South too, like you're more yeah. South yep. and you're, you know, that conservative, that conservative thing that yeah, it's a totally different culture. You just don't feel the same way up here. And it's not to say, again, like that there's not, I couldn't drive. I mean, I literally could drive 10 minutes and be. In crazy town? Make, it, make America great again. Make America oh, gotcha. great again. You know, but, yeah. um, but it's just not, it's just not in the same way that you guys have mm-hmm. to consider it in your day-to-day lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That sounds like, it sounds like a, a perfect vacation spot, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Can we go to Maine? Yeah. Guys, I've been to Maine and that doesn't fix the bubble we live in currently. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So it's been interesting for me as I quote unquote, get to know you. Obviously like it makes so, I mean, Nashville seems amazing, but you're also, um, 
gosh, and now I'm going to sound like an asshole talking about like, I hate stereotypes. So I, I rest- just say it, please say it. But like that you guys are all so progressive and just forward thinking and on your own journeys to just like be like that to be less the norm than mm-hmm. like yeah. where you're at. And I don't know. That's mm-hmm. just my perception through the sure. podcast. Mm-hmm. No, it's very true. Sadly. I mean, here's the reality is like, <clears throat> there's things I absolutely love about the South, you know, lots of things, uh, especially the food for what it's worth Mm. and the hospitality and the hospitality. My issue has always been, um, like I, I I thankfully for a while there, maybe it's just being in your twenties and thirties. I was just like, I cared less, but I always was bucking against a system, you know, like speaking of our truest paths, like, there was no room to be a Christian in particular mm-hmm. and be progressive. And by progressive, I simply mean not agree with all the things that most conservatives agree with. There was no opportunity to be a, you know, not even liberal, but just think outside of the box or you ask questions. Sh- yeah. Yeah. And to just so, not have to throw your Wilson Phillips CDs in the water. <laughs> right. <Man>. right. <laughs> What's the girl got to do around here? You just keep her damn music. Oh, God forbid there's some harmonies. <laughs> God. <laughs> That's amazing. Isn't it an interesting path we all take? Like, mm. oh, yeah. you know, we're all living in the same like reality. It's just totally different bubbles, yeah. if you will. Mm hmm. And it's so fun talking to our listeners and it's like a, it's like a version of playing the perspective game, you know, totally. it's like just hearing your perspective, Tori is, is so, um, enlightening and rich and beautiful. Yeah. And it makes me want to ask you, um, for our other listeners who are out there, is there anything that you haven't already said today in our discussion that you want to be sure that they hear from you? Hmm. I would just say that I think, can I quote a poet? Please. Okay. So Rupi Carr. Oh, I love Rupi Carr. I have her two books over here. Yes. So I decided that one of, one of her writings really resonated with me. And so I've been reading it every day and I, and I, and I, and this is what I truly Hmm. wish to give to myself and everybody else with what it, which is what is the greatest lesson a woman should learn that since day one she's already had everything she needs within herself it's the world that convinced her she did not mm. come oh, on wow. mm-hmm. i mean way to bring it back around yes 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 who needs a church when you've got that right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Amen. That is beautiful. Aww. So one more question that we have for you, Tori, and this is more um, from, you know, kind of a Professor Cat standpoint. Um, we have had healthy arguments. They haven't been ugly arguments. They've been healthy <laughs> in how to pronounce your last name. Oh, fair. Oh, fair. Vigent. Vigent. That was not on any of our radars. No. Nor was it mine when I first laid my eyes on my (laughs) handsome husband and didn't know how to say his last name. (laughs) And and, uh, I really uh, fell so deeply in love with him that it was important for me to have his last name. But boy, my maiden name of Lily is really beautiful and much easier. (laughs) Make, Make that your author pen name. I, yeah, I probably will. Cause I'm so tired of saying it's a V V is in Victor I G E A N T. It's just such a hard sound too, but yeah, I love it. I have, I have called you Vignet rhymes yeah, with beignet. Yeah. I've done like Vigente or something. <laughs> Tori, we are so grateful for you as a listener and even more grateful for you as a human being and who you are in the world and the beauty that you put out into the world. And like, it is such, it is such an honor to have you as a listener. And I personally feel like you're a friend and I'm so grateful for your friendship. And I, I, I really hope that it continues for many, 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 many moons. I agree. It's like, I feel like 
we found each other and it's like, there you are. Here we are. We've connected. Yeah. Yes. One of those things that was meant to be. So yes, exactly. Please uh, send us a poem that you would be open to us sharing. Mm. I- I'm glad you brought that up because I actually wrote down, Tori, will you do something for me? Will you record yourself reading a piece of your favorite work? Okay. I'll just record myself saying all my favorite swears. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> just all cuss words. <laughs> Take this conservative. <laughs> Fuck you. Shit on Shit. you, oh, asshole. Damn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yourself okay <laughs> so funny um in a in a body work session that i had very very early on in my like kind of body work journey um i remember my therapist saying she's like is there is there something that's coming to mind that you want to say and i said yes but it's real naughty like it's 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 bad and it's not okay and she was like this is a safe place like if you feel like it would help you to say whatever that is she's like i would invite you to voice that in this safe place and i was like okay and i said god <laughs> and and I felt I felt like tingles in my body going like oh my god like I've never said that in my entire life and now for the past like what has it been guys probably the past year like I say god damn it more in my life and I am convinced that I am just I am making up for lost time I am making up for the entire time in my life when I have felt that the only exclamation around this experience I'm having is god damn it <laughs> like <laughs> it was this was the best you are the best this was so fun thank you for being you Oh, ditto. You guys are, you are an incredible part of my life. And that is not an understatement. You're in my ears, my friends in my ears. I love that. And we feel the same about you. Thank you for taking the time to share your heart and your story. Thank you. You guys are the best. All right. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. producer Sarah Reed. To find out more, go to catandmoosepodcast.com. Cat and Moose is a BP production.